Um, well, hey, this is an official, official, official welcome uh, to uh, this month's masterclass. Sorry for the little tech issue. Um, my Mac is usually perfect in every way. My MacBook Air that I use, and for whatever reason, the the odd time the audio kicks out, and I need to reboot it. So, um, so apologize for your time is is important. So I, I'm apologizing for um, using your time, not using your time well for the first ten minutes. But hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to max out our time for the last 50 minutes, and you're going to get a heck of a lot of great content um, and valuable stuff related to email, kind of protecting your email lists uh, this year and, and, and beyond. And so um, that's basically what we're going to be talking about, how to, how to navigate the email marketing uh, minefield. And it really is a minefield. It is a, it is a industry that has had such a big impact on, on my business. But it also has created great grief in the past. And you know, I'm sure many of you uh, are working with clients that have email lists, or maybe you have your own email list. So this is really, really valuable. Um, this is a valuable topic. And let me tell you, this is not like this is not like a, a sexy topic like social media or some of the other cool tools, but this one is a game changer for uh, for the a game changer for your clients and it can have a huge impact on their email list moving forward. And like a lot of entrepreneurs, my email list is at the heart of my business. You know, my software could fall apart, my system could go down, but if my email list disappears, then I have major problems because I have a pretty large buyer list, I have a large subscriber list to lose that list is uh, is absolutely detrimental and essentially uh, that is what happened, and I'm going to share that story here uh, in a, in a few moments. But uh, yeah, definitely. Thanks for um, thanks for tuning in. I see that all of you. You can certainly. I know some of you were introducing yourself, and I, I missed that. So we'll have to do the time. Uh, we'll have to have a little more conversation at the beginning next time. Um, if you have any questions today uh, in your webinar jam interface, please post your questions. Everyone else can see your comments and questions, and so um, this is your time, and I want to really hear from you as well. Um, in addition to that, if you want to tweet out anything profound that is said today, I can't promise it's going to be profound, but there could be a few nuggets of, of wisdom that I'm going to impart to you. Uh, you can just go pound sign VA Classroom. So VA Classroom, pound sign, pound sign VA Classroom and Twitter and Facebook, wherever, and, and definitely tweet out uh, any, anything to your community that you think has some value today. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago, uh, actually, let me back up a little bit. I, I have been using uh, email and working in the email marketing space since 2003. So what's that, 12 years? Uh, I started off with a client that had thousands and thousands of people on their email list. And, and this particular client uh, turned, eventually turned into a partner of mine. But they, uh, they had been working on the internet since 1997. And they went right through the dot-com boom, through the dot-com bust. And that's where people during that time had millions on their email list. Uh, there, a lot of them weren't permission-based email lists. People had spam lists. There was spamming was just uh, prolific, as you might recall, back in '99, 2000, 2001. You know, you would go to your inbox in the morning and you would see 250 spam posts on really awful stuff, and that became kind of a our life for a number of years until. Uh, better spam filters came in place. Uh, email service providers and ISPs got together to really crack down on spam. Um, things like the Can Spam Act of 2003 came out, which legislated that you can't, you that spamming has to stop, and we're going to lay down the hammer on people that do that. Canada followed suit quite a few years, quite a few years later. I think back it was it 2013. They came out with their Can. Um, Canadian spam law, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit, I think it's called Castle, um, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about later on because there is a, a distinction. If you're working with Canadian clients and US clients, there is a key distinction between um, the spam laws that you need to be aware of as well. So there was a long, for a long time in the internet space, there was a thought that email marketing was going to die because there was so much spam out there and people's inboxes were cluttered with so much junk that how could you actually send a viable message that people would click through? 
Well, that changed, and, and obviously email marketing has, has persisted and lived on, and we see uh, it's still the most profitable channel in our business. And any other entrepreneur you work with um, will say it's more profitable than Facebook ads, it's more profitable than Google AdWords, it's more profitable than any other channel. And uh, due to good spam filters, I mean, I don't know about you, but my inbox is, is cleaner than it's ever been. And, uh, you know, the key now is, is to how do we engage our audience? You know, how do we attract their attention and, and stay in their inbox so they don't unsubscribe from us? But that's not the focus of today. We're going to talk more about um, how to navigate the email marketing minefield and how to make sure your clients don't get banned they don't get blacklisted and they don't start to lose a lot of money because their emails are no longer being delivered, which is a, a great tragedy. And that happened actually to us uh, a couple weeks ago. And so one of the reasons I'm doing this event, because this is speaking from very personal experience, my partner, Paul Maxey, uh, you know, texted me, I think it was early in the morning, a few, a couple weeks ago and said, um, vaclassroom.com is showing up on a blacklist. And I was like, this is the worst news. You do not want this news as a as someone that has a large email list and makes their living on the internet. And so we did some research and we found that we had sh we showed up on a smaller list. So in a few moments I'll talk about the big kahunas, the ones that you do not want to be on their list and then there's the ones that are smaller that you know even good people like me uh, can show up on their list. And because we're not spamming, we do uh, we have clear opt-ins. You know, we don't send uh, a lot of we don't send <laughs> we don't send any junk mail, and so we should not be showing up on the list. And as a result, uh, you know, we had a, a twenty or thirty percent of our emails weren't being delivered, and we noticed this trend over a couple months, and then we realized this blacklist had happened, and we're rectifying it right now. And what we realize is that uh, VA Classroom and actually one of our other domains was on what is called a shared IP, where other people are accessing that same IP. And let's say person A and person B are sending spam, and I'm person C, and I'm just a good old boy doing my, doing my thing, being very permission-based with my email marketing. But person A and person B are not, and so suddenly it's like guilt by association. And uh, that's kind of what happened, and I'll explain that in more detail in a little bit. So. So I wanted to do a, a, that's why I wanted to make this class today about, uh, about email marketing, about how to make sure that your clients and yourself are having, um, are protecting your lists and protect, protect, protecting what is a, a very critical asset in any entrepreneur's business today. And so I can tell you right now that what I'm going to teach you today, 95% of the entrepreneurs out there aren't doing this. They aren't cleaning their list. They're not doing the things necessary to make sure that they're protecting themselves fully. And fortunately, my partner, Paul, is diligent. He's got a system that he's put in place for cleaning our list, making sure that our email lists are well-maintained, especially in light of this, this issue with this uh, domain blacklist. So anyways, it's not going to derail us. We're on a good track, and uh, certainly we are not uh, spamming anybody, which is, uh, which is a good thing. All right, so let's go. I want to dive into a bit of content. So I'm going to move over to uh, my presentation, and hopefully you're going to be able to see it here. It's going to come up in a moment. All right, so let me just present to everybody. Okay, so you, are you seeing this? It uh, should be coming up in your screen there, uh, how to navigate the email marketing uh, minefield. You're able to see that slide deck? Um, just say check, yes, all good. Just let, just let me know, make sure that uh, since my, my little meltdown earlier on, uh, technology, I want to make sure uh, we're still good. So hopefully you're all seeing this and it's coming up clear. Good. Okay, so let me just slide over here for a moment. And I'm going to move this up and just drop that down. Make sure you're you know, slide back, make sure you're seeing it okay. So this is how to navigate the email marketing minefield. Um, I will have a replay of this. I'll also provide this slide deck as a, as a handout for you and a PDF that you can access after as well. There's some really good information in here. So take some notes, ask your questions, and, uh, and let's do this. Okay, so first of all, um, you may not know this, but currently uh, in 
and, you, and we kind of thought maybe the spam issue was behind us. You know, it was so 2003, but it's not. Um, did you know that nine out of every 10 emails delivered are still spam? Okay. It's, you know, the reality is we've got better, better filtering systems. If you go into your spam filter, which many of you probably clear out, um, if you're managing your, your email client well, uh, there's still a ton of those emails that come in. So we're still seeing nine out of every 10 emails delivered are spam. Fortunately, we have better systems and better filtering systems in place so that we see less and less of it showing up in our inbox, or we should be seeing less and less of it. Okay, so spam is still a major problem. The reality is we've just gotten smarter. But that's why there are these blacklist sites out there because they are still trying to crack down on all the spam that's attempting to hit our inbox. Mm. So a couple things. So that the uh, there are basically four key email players. Let me unpack um, kind of the who's who when you're thinking of email list building or marketing. Um, and there's basically four. You've got the ISPs. These are the internet service providers. They run your mailbox. They're concerned with keeping spam out of your inbox. You might be using Gmail or Yahoo Mail, or maybe you're you've got a, a you're using um, Cox Communication or Comcast or or something different. So these ones are ensuring that the filtering they they're putting the filters in place to make sure that your box is nice and clean. Okay, so the ISPs are are on alert uh, and they do not want to send mail to any or if they deem anything that they see as spammy, it's going to go into the filter. So, which is why, you know, later in a few moments, I'm going to talk to you about best practices for email delivery to make sure you're, you're adhering to these so that the ISPs, the internet service providers, aren't flagging you and causing your mail not to be delivered as effectively. Okay? Because, again, if 20% if of your list, like or whatever ours was, stops mailing, um, you know, your clients could quickly quantify how much money they're losing by not being able to fully deliver their emails, which is a big deal. So we've got the ISPs, we've got uh, the spammers. These are the people we don't like. We could probably use worse words for them. But these are the, the guys and gals sending email you do not want to get. Okay, we all know who they are, and, and they're, we're, I think we're more sophisticated now than ever uh, to, to, to filter them, filter that's those spam messages. Then there's the recipients. Um, which is you and the recipients of 200 billion emails sent each day. Isn't that a huge number? I mean, we're at about 7 billion people on the planet. Um, 200 billion emails are sent each day, um, which is why we need to have internet service providers and spam filters. To We need sophisticated technology to manage the, the heavy load of emails, of which many of those are spam. Um, and then there's the ESPs. These are the email service providers. So these are... Aweber, Mailchimp, um, you know, maybe uh, Entreporter, Infusionsoft, uh, you know, Direct Response, Constant Contact. The list goes on. So these are the email programs that you and your clients subscribe to to kind of manage your list, to broadcast from that tool, to set up auto email autoresponders, all those good, all those good things. Um, so those companies are responsible for delivering the two hundred billion emails. Okay, so those are the email service providers. So we've got the ISPs, the ESPs, and in between that, the spammers and the recipients, which is us. So those are the players that uh, are, that's kind of the, the players that we're seeking to navigate around as we, uh, you know, as we attempt to have a clean list and make sure that nothing, make sure that the list is protected as much as possible. Okay, so blacklisting 101. Blacklisting 101. I want to give you a quick run through. This may be, you may have heard of whitelisting, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment, but you may not have spent as much time thinking about, about blacklisting. Um, so let's go ahead and let me just quick, quick switch there. Okay, let's talk about blacklisting. And let me give you a quick run through. So blacklisting is also known as, uh, it gets also known as a black hole list. You don't want to end up on the black hole list because it's it, it can have a detrimental impact on your ability to deliver emails. Um, I remember years ago when I worked in the internet space, people used to like rent and buy email lists all the time. And you know, I remember the one of the clients I was working with, he was buying email lists, and I didn't really understand things well enough to know that maybe that's not a good thing. Because if you're buying an email list from somebody, you don't know 
how those lists got on a name. Did people actually opt in to relevant offers or did they get exported from somebody's database and put onto an email list? So back then there was tons of sketchy things going on, which is why we needed uh, laws put in place to, 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 to ensure that that doesn't happen. And so, um, yeah, so I remember, you know, I was one of the roles that I had in the company was to um, connect with email marketing firms and try to get people that will mail for our products and our programs. And I, I was constantly dealing with people that would say, you, we've got the cleanest list, we've got their double opt-in, people have opted in for offers that they want. And then you'd realize that you get all these complaints after, um, you know, who are you? You know, why are you mailing to me? Because these lists were rented or they were bought. So I, I, it goes without saying in this day and age, you do not buy lists or rent lists because that's just a that's just a recipe for disaster. Um, and again, that's we most mature entrepreneurs online know that now. They should know that. Uh, a real time database. So blacklisting is a. a a real-time database, okay? There's a number of them out there that use a, a particular criteria to determine if an I, IP, um, which is, stands for Internet Protocol, um, an IP is uh, sending email that is considered spam, okay? So that's, they're scouring the net to see if there is an, someone sending spam, they're connected to the IPs, and if, you know, if they see an IP sending particular spam, you may end up on a, or even if you're associated with the same IP as another spammer, which we call these these shared servers or these shared hosting sites, uh, then you could be guilty by association as well and can, can be considered spam. Uh, blacklists were created back in 97. There was a first person to create a blacklist. They saw early on that this was going to spiral out of control as the dot-com boom went crazy in 99 um, and the growth of spam occurred. So. Sadly, there was lots of good internet companies emerging and growing, but there was a lot of people taking advantage of it. And they were using IP address. So what would happen is, is their IP address would get blocked and then they would just go to another IP address. And then they would, a lot of the big time spammers, they were going offshore. So they were using offshore IPs, which a lot of these blacklists and internet service provider and, and the people that were regulating it, they couldn't track them as well. So they were sending tons of junk from international IPs. And that has, again, been seriously cracked down on. It's still an, an issue, but not to what it used to be. Um, Can Spam Act in the US came into effect in 2003 to formally address the spam issue. So here in Canada, up until 2012 or 13, we didn't even have a, a governing body. You know, we, you know, I have a lot of US clients, so I was adhering to Can Spam, but Canadians didn't have to. Um, until now, obviously that has changed um, substantially. And I hope you can see this. this. Let me make sure it's coming up. This, if you can't see this very clear in your particular screen, I this will be included in in a handout for you as well. Um, so let me just circle back here. So, so the Castle is the Canadian law. Can spam is the U.S. one. Um, Can spam applies to email where the primary pur purpose is commercial, um, and uh, Castle's gone like a little bit more broad in their definition. They say it applies to all commercial, all electronic messages such as email, text, social media, IM, voice. Um, you know, so you've got to be careful even what you're posting in social media uh, as well, in addition to text messaging and all that stuff. So it's 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 a much more comprehensive, sadly for us. It's like it's a more comprehensive uh, law, um, and. A, can spam includes messages that are a result of an action taken by a content, such as a, a confirmation or a welcome email. Um, okay, so the difference here is Castle includes messages that are a result of an action. Uh, so it excludes. So Can spam excludes those messages that are a result of an action taken by content. So, so there, if you've uh, opted in um, and you received a confirmation, you're good to go. Um, you know, with Castle, a lot of them are requiring us to be what is called double opt-in. So we have to take a second action, you know, so someone opts in and then they take a second action to say, are you sure you want to receive this offer from Craig? Um, and then at that point, they that is uh, fully approved. Um, now, many of you have been on my list, so I, I'm not gonna always do double opt-ins to people that are already on my established list, but for our new audience, certainly 
a double opt-in kind of keeps us compliant. Um, and uh, again, with can spam, you know, people can be sent email marketing messages with prior consent, without prior consent with can spam. You could send the messages, but you have to make sure that you have a physical opt-out that they can opt out if they don't want to receive it or uh, unsubscribe. Whereas in Canada, you must have taken an action before you receive any messages. It must be very clear on what they're going to be receiving. Okay, so if you send them to a webinar and then you start promoting all these offers to them, that's uh, against the law. Okay, you have to say something with a maybe with a checkbox that says, um, "Please, if you're interested in other offers that the A Classroom is that's available at the A Classroom, um, you know, that box is checked off so that they it verifies that yes, you're going to receive what you're the download or the webinar that you're accessing, but you're also potentially going to get some other offers as well." Um, and then both, you must clearly identify the sender. Who is this person? Um, clearly identify from what domain it's coming from. Okay. So again, these two laws are put in place to protect the integrity of email marketing so that we're getting higher quality messages, that we're getting less spam. Uh, but ultimately, these laws can also hurt even the good people as, as well. Okay. So definitely important more than ever if you're Canadian very tight laws and can and can and certainly the US as well and big time fines um, you could do fines up to 10 grand for corporations um, up to a million for individuals you're, you're even saying imprisonment imprisonment so it's a big deal and then uh, fines per violation in the US is up to 16,000 US so so a big deal for sure um, and I'm sure that's deterred a lot of amateur spammers maybe not the professional spammers so there's essentially two types of blacklists. We've got the IP blacklist, Internet Protocol blacklist. Your, your, your server or where your website is hosted is hosted on an IP. It's either on a dedicated IP or a shared IP. So with IP blacklists, um, they're basically concerned with the source of the message. So where is the message coming from? What IP address? So host servers could be HostGator, GoDaddy, other, other services as well. This is kind of a situation that, that we had, um, obviously being associated with a sort of a shared server. Um, particularly with our other domain, Education U, was with HostGator and obviously was connected to uh, a shared server because we haven't even really mailed a heck of a lot from that email and that domain, and yet it, it was still blacklisted on one site. And fortunately, it's on a very minor blacklist. It's not on one of the major ones, uh, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So I, there's IP blacklists and then there's domain blacklists. This is, uh, the domain blacklists are concerned with the source of the link in the message. So if you're creating a, a if you have a funky link with this, this particular code that's leading to somebody else's website, they might raise some red flags. Or if you're linking to um, uh, you know, inappropriate sites or sites that are flagged on the internet or, or blacklisted in any way, shape, or form, you're, you're sending to those domains, that could, again, be guilty by association. So again, uh, you got to be making sure you're very clear on who you're linking out to. If you find some random post on a blog and you link out to them, you got to make sure that that blog is, has not been blacklisted because you could be guilty by association. Okay? So those are IP blacklists and those are domain blacklists. So any questions on that? As, you know, We're going to get past blacklists in a moment, but I wanted to make sure you understand what it is, um, you know, how you get blacklisted, and then um, the, the distinction between the two types. Okay. All right. Yes, uh, Denise, typically um, you're asking, uh, Denise is asking if we can go full screen, uh, see the full screen on this presentation. Um, what happens sometimes with Google Hangouts is when I go full screen, could be my computer, uh, but I've used it, it happen a couple times where it just freezes. So when I start to go slide to slide, it, uh, yeah, it freezes on me and yeah, it's, it's not a good thing. So, so hopefully, hopefully you're still able to see that clearly. I prefer to, I don't want it to freeze up on me. So I'm a, it happened a couple times, a little bit paranoid. Um, so Sue says, so does this imply that one should have their own unique IP, IP address not shared with anyone else? Likely fairly expensive for the client. Yes, yeah, so typically you'll start off with a shared. And if you, for the most part, if you're working with reputable host companies like, like HostGator or Bluehost or 
even GoDaddy, you should be okay. Yes, is there a chance you could run into issues for sure? Um, but but yes, it it is ideal to be on your unique IP. Our main domain has its own server, so its own dedicated server. Our a couple of our other domains are on shared servers, which is where we ran into some issues. Um, but it could be expensive. So for example, for us. Our dedicated server, which is our own IPs, so no one else could be mailing from those IPs, um, cost me around $200 a month. Okay, so that's for a very large server that allows me a lot of bandwidth and good stuff. So, so that's that's not bad. It's 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 well worth the price for us to have that on our on our main domains. Okay. So uh, yeah, and Heather mentioned, can you go full? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't go full screen just because I. Don't want it. Don't want the presentation to freeze on us. Okay. Uh, Mary says, if you're blacklisted, can you set up shop elsewhere without remaining blacklisted? Um, well, not exactly, because if the blacklist is connected to your domain, Mary, if it's then your domain is affected. Okay. So, so any mailing from that domain. Now, you can. The way to get around it is that you you mail from a different domain, or you you associate it with a different website. Um, maybe you have, let's say, you got maryruth.com and maryruth.net. You, for whatever reason, maryruth.com gets blacklisted. You could start mailing from maryruth.net. You know, those are some some different ways around it. But it, the best thing is you wanna you wanna rectify the issue. You wanna resolve it and make sure that you're you're staying off those blacklists. Um, Chiquita says, do you know of any host server companies off the top of your head that are on blacklists so we don't use them? No, the ones I mentioned, like the mainstream ones, the most popular ones are good. Like GoDaddy, HostGator, Bluehost. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some other ones. A one in one. Um, they're all reputable, long standing companies. If they were connected to so much spam, they would go out of business really quick. So they're really established. So look for the ones that have good reviews and good reputations and just do your, your research. Even if you look at, if you go to website hosting reviews, if you Google that, you will get some good, uh, uh, and even if you put in spam and website hosts, <laughs> you'll see which ones are connected. Mm. If people have had um, spam issues as a result of the uh, website host that they're with, they are going to be vocal about it. You can be you can be certain about that. Okay. Uh, Lisa says, "Where does Infusionsoft fall into this? If mailing from there, well, Infusionsoft has their own. Um, again, they they." Again, it's more connected to your host. So Infusionsoft, what happens is, is if you are sending, and we'll talk about this in a moment, if you're sending emails, so because Infusionsoft's an ESP, right? They're an email service provider. GoDaddy is an ISP, an internet service provider, okay? And, uh, and so they're, and they're a hosting company as well. Um, and then your internet service provider can also be your, you know, could be Comcast or whatever. Uh, but the, the ESP, is also concerned about uh, the messages you're sending. Let's say you are sending a ton of scandalous, spammy messages, and complaints are starting to be added up. So, because in Fusionsoft and in Mailchimp, it'll show how many complaints came back from that message. If they start to get complaints, then Mailchimp and uh, Fusionsoft and those big ESPs, they could get banned. So they are the ones that would be blacklisted, not you. Which is why which is exactly why anytime you start to send messages that are becoming across as spammy or, or there's getting complaints, they'll just shut you down or they'll just not want to work with you anymore or they'll they'll tell you to go find another ESP or they'll warn you. Okay, So they're very diligent about making sure that uh, you're sending appropriate messages. Okay, So that's, and that's why a lot of them have sort of double opt-ins in place to make sure that those that are opting in really do want to receive this information from you. Okay. So yeah, Sabrina, for sure. Resellers of GoDaddy, HostGator, so the those ones that private label things, you know, typically should be good as well. Okay. Uh, once blacklisted, is there a way to get off the list or is the client there forever? <laughs> well, the old name Felicia used to be called the black hole. So the, the premise would be that you would never get off there. It is not easy to get off the larger ones. Um, there is uh, companies in place now that, and yes, you have to pay like a nominal monthly subscription. I'll show you one here in a moment, where they will, uh, so, so they will actually 
um, solicit the company on your behalf and saying, you know, so and so is can spam compliant. Their ISPs are clean. They should not be on the list. Can you look at it? And then, so you're basically applying to be what is called delisted. Um, so getting delisted is a good thing in the spam world. You're getting delisted from a blacklist. And then you can also go to the respective blacklist sites, which I'll show you a couple in a moment, where they have um, an application you can apply for delisting. And so that's what we did through one the it's called Sorbs S O R B S Sorbs is one of the small blacklists. Um, I've gone through the process of applying to be delisted, um, and I sent them a really candid email as as to how I, um, you know, I was very tactful, but did did not was not comfortable being on their blacklist any way, shape, or form. So, okay, so hope that makes sense. Keep the questions coming. These are these are really really good. Okay, so those are the two types of blacklists. Now, let's talk about blacklists to watch out for. Um, the large reputable blacklists are ones that you do not want to be on because they are like a black hole. They have very strong relationships with um, the ISPs and the, the ones that are delivering mail, the ESPs. So if you are showing up on SpamHoss, SpamCop, or Herbal, U-R-I-B-L or S-U-R-B-L, there's cause for concern. It doesn't mean that the, your business life is over. It just means that you have to really connect directly with them and plead your case that, you know, why you shouldn't be on that. Spam Hoss is the worst. It's been known by entrepreneurs as the Alcatraz of blacklist that you just can't escape it. <laughs> you can't get out of it once you're on it. And it does affect your email deliverability. There's a certain percentage of your emails that will not be delivered as a result of being on Spam Hoss. Fortunately for us, we are not on any of the big, 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 big three kahunas there. And Spam Hoss and Spam Cop are the biggest ones. Um, the smaller black loss, Sorbs, which is the one we showed up on, Spam Cannibal is another one. And there's a few other sort of really small ones. They may or may not really have much of an impact. Um, you don't want to show up on those blacklists, but they, have, they are radically different than if you show up on Spam Hoss or Spam Cop. Okay, so if your client is on there then and they're struggling and wondering why am I not getting as many opens or my emails just are not delivering or I'm not getting as much engagement from my emails as I used to or sales, then you might do a search to make sure they don't show up on Spam Hoss. And I'll show you a couple tools in a moment that you can do a search on your domains. You'll probably be very interested to see if your domains um, or your IP address is showing up on any of the blacklists. And we'll do that uh, here shortly. So those are the reputable lists. Be aware of them. Don't worry about it. It's, it's hard. You know, you have to be a spammer to get on Spam Hoss. I mean, there are mistakes that they've made, but uh, it's a cause for concern if your clients are on there. Um, so this is Spam Hoss. This is, a, you know, they actually have a block list removal center. Okay, so you go through the process. You put your either your IP address, and so that's that sort of like 78.987. That's the, the number that your hosting company gives you. Okay, you all have an IP address. If you've got a website, you've got an IP address. Um, so, or you enter your domain to see if your domain's on the spam host block list. So fortunately, I, obviously when you show up on even a small list, you get paranoid. So we went through and did all the searches and we are squeaky clean compared on, on all these lists. We're not showing up. Um, but spam host is one to definitely have a look at. If, especially if your client has been like, wow, my emails just don't seem to be delivered as well as they, as well as they used to be. Okay. MX Toolbox is, a, is kind of a, a service that they, they will represent you um, in terms of uh, the, you know, seeing if you've been blacklisted and, and, and contacting the blacklist company, but they're also one to analyze your health. So they'll tell you um, if you have any warnings, any issues, things like that. And this was the MX Toolbox. If you just Google, I think it's mxtoolbox.com. Um, this is the one that came up for us was, uh, you might not be able to see it on the, let me see how it shows up for you. Yeah, it's pretty small there, but you can see down below VA Classroom Blacklist, blacklisted by Sorbs, D-U-H-L, okay, which is a smaller one, but nonetheless, it showed up there. Okay, so MX Toolbox is one that you can check out in it. It will do a bit of an analysis. Let me see if I can bring that up for us here. Um, just one. And the other one is actually called the multi uh, multi RBL lookup. 
So let's go and do a little bit of searching here. So we're going to go to the internet. Let me go and switch, uh, switch my screens here. Okay. All right. So hey, you can see me again. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to go to. Let's see here. We're going to go to the web. Uh, I should go to the entire screen here, and I'm just going to. I'm just switching over to the internet. Hopefully, you're able to see me. And we're just going to open another one, and we're going to go to. Uh, let's see here, toolbox mx. Oops, toolbox mx. Sorry, mxtoolbox.com. So there it is, and let me make sure that you're show you're seeing the same thing as I am. Okay, let me see. Let me present to everybody. Is it coming up okay? I'm seeing myself. I'm seeing multiple screens now <laughs> showing up. Are you seeing multiple as well? Are you are you seeing? I'm I'm wondering. Um, what's how's it looking for you? Are you just seeing one page, or is it like multiple pages showing up? Just let just let me know. So I want to make sure it's it's coming in good for you. Multiples, okay. <laughs> Let's get out of there. Uh, we're gonna pop out, and maybe I I maybe I went back in too quick. So it's a one page. Let's go and let's just slowly click the screen share button and slowly go to entire screen. Slowly click share. Hmm. Look at that. Okay, so let's let's just troubleshoot this without panicking. Um, so that's the Google Hangout. <laughs> okay, this is bizarre. Okay, so what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Let me open up. Uh, let me open up Safari. Just one sec, as I bring Safari up, and I'm going to go to MX Toolbox. Bring that up, and I'm going to bring you back. Make sure you, you're seeing what I'm seeing. So we'll go back to screen share. Okay, and we're going to go to this one. Hopefully, that's coming up nice. Aha! There we go. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe with we're still kind of navigating Webinar Jam, and but maybe using the same browser as the you know as the Google Hangout. Maybe there's an issue with that. So, so it should be coming up clear now. Okay, good. Okay, so this is MX Toolbox. Let me make it a little bigger for you so you can see it, see how it's showing up for you. Good. So this is where you would look up. Let's go um, to educationu.com. All right, and so it does a full test for you. So it'll say find problems, education U. It's doing a little. It's Doing its little analysis. Okay, and so it is showing up on two ones. So it's showing up on Fable Sources and Spam Cannibal, uh, which was a, this was our other domain that also had an issue. And again, it hasn't really, I don't think this domain's been affected like in terms of its deliverability, but we're, we're still trying to assess that. But when I click on more information, um, this is when they you have to kind of put in a name and email address and get their get on their free account. Um, but this, again, it, it's been added there. Um, you can certainly uh, then connect with Spam Cannibal to get delisted, Okay, so get unlisted. Now, this is a situation where Education U is on a shared domain. Now, it is on HostGator, which is a reputable host provider. But uh, for whatever reason, by association, we've been connected to somebody. And we're resolving that uh, with HostGator. So MX Toolbox. Is a, is a good tool for you to use. Um, the other one, just to bring it up here, is multi, multi RBL. So that's a really random name, but let me show you this. Multi RBL search. Okay. Uh, there it is. This is the right one. Okay. So this is a check tool. So again, uh, you can go and let's put vaclassroom.com in there, send. 
and it does a whole analysis. It looks at all the different spam ones. And I think, it, let's see here. Um, and this one's not listed. This one's not listed. Uh, as we scroll down, this is a this is our clean domain, fortunately. Um, so it says not listed on all the major ones. And I think if you scroll down, you can see spam host show up here. There we go. Spam host domain block list. It's not listed. So again, when you're searching for this with your clients, um, and actually, I think I went into the wrong one. Hold on. I'm in Chrome. I should be over at Firefox or sorry, Safari. Let me go in here and show you what show you what I was looking at. That would probably help. Okay. Let me make sure you're seeing what I'm seeing. Okay, there you go. All right, so there, there it is. So again, it's, it's kind of small, but this is uh, a tool called uh, multi uh, multi dot org. Um, we'll have that in. A, it's it's listed in our slide deck, and so that'll be a, a resource for you. But again, this is a tool that you see. It's right there. There's the URL multi 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 rbl dot valley.org. Again, another tool for you just to evaluate where your clients are at. So you can you can look up IP addresses, so the like the 112.177, like that long number, or you can look up by domain. Okay. So and this one, I'm going to check education U because it's showing up on one. Let's see if it shows up as again, each of these search tools might have a you know again now this here it's showing um, let's see here. It's showing that we're not blacklisted on this on this particular one. Um, so again, you have to look at a couple of the search tools. Definitely go to the main reputable blacklist tools like Spamhaus and to, to ensure that you're not listed with them, which is really important. But these are a couple tools that you can definitely check out as well. Um, and I'm not sure, I can't give you a really good answer as to why um, with the one tool um, over here. Uh, we're showing up with two errors that were blacklisted on these. Um, but for this one, I'm just trying to bring it, going to show Cannibal here. It may be that that particular blacklist doesn't show up on this list. Shows up on the, maybe this is not fully complete. Or maybe it just has the big ones because you see Herbal here, which is a big one. Um, Sorbs uh, obviously is one that we've shown up on before, but it's not, we're not listed here. So, so again, another tool that uh, can at least get you searching to make sure that you're, you're in fact clean. Okay, so going back to, let me just switch my presentation here a second. And I'm gonna go back to something else. I'll take a couple questions for you. Take your questions in a moment. Let me just go back and I just wanna show you a couple more things and then we'll get into, get into some questions, a question period here. Okay, so that should be showing up nice for you now. All right, so let's move on to uh, a couple of best practices. So at the end of the day, compliance is the first line of defense to protecting your list from getting blacklisted. You wanna make sure you are fully compliant with every part of your email marketing and delivery. Um, so I wanna talk about some tips for protecting your client's list. This stuff is really valuable and really important. So uh, first of all, as best as you can, choose double opt-in over single opt-in. Double opt-in again means that someone is opted in to receive the free download on 10 cake decorating tips. They then go to their email and they get a verification note that says, are you sure? Click this link to confirm and receive your free download on cake decorating tips. That's a double opt-in. Single opt-in is you, you download, you opt-in, for the cake decorating tips, and you're right on the list, and immediately you're you're getting um, you're getting um, emails. There's no other further verification. Uh, double opt-in ensures that you get the right people on the list. Yes, people have to take an extra step, but it further qualifies it. And what it does, your client may not have the same size of list, but they're going to have better quality. Their leads are going to be that much better because people have opted in twice. They've had to take two actions to get on your list. Okay, so that's. Uh, as my, I took this right from Paul because Paul says, if someone's not willing to verify their email, are they the best prospect anyways? Okay. So the first thing is to, is to choose double opt-in over single opt-in. The second thing is to get white, list, white listed through engaging emails. So it's important to send, especially at the beginning, first few emails, 
send interesting, engaging, high value welcome emails that draws them to click on a link. Because when they're taking action, then the, the providers are, are seeing that they're engaged with your emails um, and there's a chance that you're, you could just get whitelisted. Okay, so they're, the more they engage with it, the, obviously the better it is. So ask them, you could ask them even to reply to an email if you're asking them a question, say just click reply. When you do that, it, it, that can actually automatically get you whitelisted okay, by, a, um, by an ISP. Okay, so that's, that's a good thing. And it includes um, specific direction. And also you may want to include specific directions on whitelisting your email. So, um, so this is where maybe uh, they opt in to receive your download on 10 cake decorating tips. And then on the confirmation page, you, you give them a couple instructions on how to whitelist. And the way to do that is, uh, is actually in this link. And this is included in my slide deck. So whatcounts.com, and then you'll see the, the rest of the domain, how-to-whitelist-emails. Check this out. There's a great resource on how to whitelist. I'm not going to – today we're spending more on the negative side. We're spending – we're hanging out more on the blacklist side than the whitelist side. But getting whitelisted is definitely going to resolve the issue of um, getting spam complaints and things like that. Number three, purge unopened emails. This is something that very few of your clients do, I would imagine, which is regularly remove people who have not opened an email in a certain period of time, maybe every 90 days or every 120 days, every three to four months. If they're not opening the email during that time, then they've gotten cold. They either are not interested in your offer anymore, maybe they forgot about you, and those are the ones that can become spam complaints. Those are the ones that could say, hey, got this email, suddenly showed in my inbox, and they forgot that they opted in a few months ago. So. Again, that's one way to keep your list clean is, is, is purge it every three months. Some people do it every even as far as every six months. But if you receive a complaint, uh, be sure the person is unsubscribed from your list. So if you see a complaint show up in your ESP, your email service provider, just make sure that they have been removed. The person probably complained and then unsubscribed. Just make sure they took that step because you do not want to continue to email someone that has complained about the, you emailing them in the first place. Um, Manage your bounces so people, so if you're going to emails that are dead for whatever reason, they're not unlisted or they're not working anymore, manage those, uh, remove those email addresses to keep your list clean. Okay, so this is, again, as a part of an email marketing service that you as a VA can offer, it's just email list management. And you can take some of the steps that I'm showing you right now and do this for your clients on a monthly basis or on a, on a regular basis to ensure their lists are clean and protected. And then from there, use best practices when sending email. So this is really important. So a few quick points for you here. Uh, you want to uh, mail from a private IP address if possible, not a shared one, um, especially as you grow. And again, that's just saving you grief. I know that's what's happened to us with one of our domains. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen to you. And yes, it's much cheaper to do a shared host, but it comes with that concern that you might um, you might end up on a blacklist. Okay. Um, from there, uh, whoops, sorry, let me go back up. Um, the second one is be fully can spam compliant or castle compliant in Canada. B have a physical address, have an opt out link. Make sure your emails that's very visible. Um, so someone's saying, listen, I can't opt out, and it, that shouldn't be true because there should be a clearly marked link. Um, and if you're using any of the email service providers like AWeber or MailChimp, they have them clearly marked there. Um, use a name, not a domain in the from line. So we used to say vaclassroom.com a lot. It's just more reputable if you actually put your personal name or, or just even VA Classroom um, than, than putting a domain name. Okay, even from making, you know, even from a email marketing 101, you make a personal people connect with people, not domains, right? So, you know, typically I should be using my name, Craig, because you, you know, you've, some of you know, know me for a long time. So you see an email that comes up for me, hopefully you might want to open it. Um, maintain a 80-20 text to image ratio. This is important. So this is where you have 80% text, 20% images. And the reason that is, is because if you load it with big images, the, the ISP may not deliver it because it's the, the image files are too large. Um, they're taking up too much of the email. So it's cool to have really image-rich newsletters, but you got to be careful. You, we, it's better than it ever before. Certainly, you can use HTML newsletters and images, 
Um, some people like to take a screenshot of a video that they're going to play, like click on this video, and there's a picture of the video there. That's all good. You just got to make sure you're, you're building text around it as well and, and kind of keeping in tune with that type of ratio. Um, oh, sorry, I've already tapped in. Oh, I went back one. Uh, the next one is to be sure to send them exactly what they requested. So if they are getting um, 10 cake decorating tips, make sure that's exactly what they receive right away. Okay? Not warming them up with a couple emails saying down the road they're going to get this, this PDF because people are going to be ticked off. So make sure you're very clear and they get what exactly what you've told them they're, they're going to get. Um, don't write like a spammer. So saying congratulations, you've won a seat in our program. That's language that's kind of spammy, and you want to make sure you're not using that those kind of words. Um, you can even Google online avoid spam language, and there there probably is glossaries of spam words to avoid. Um, that tends to be one, and I know I've been guilty of using congratulations in the past. Um, but again, those words could be geared to sweepstakes and sort of spammy, um, you know, promotions and things like that. Uh, also, create anchor text for your hyperlinks as opposed to your to your using your URL. What happens is that a lot of ESPs will connect a, a, a code to the end of it. So it's this: if it shows up as vaclassroom.com forward slash mail dot one two four, it kind of looks a little suspicious. So the way you do it is you, especially for HTML emails, you obviously can't do it with text emails, but for HTML emails, hyperlink it and say visit VA Classroom here. And then I hyperlink that content with a domain. That's a best practice, and it's a good way to make sure your emails are getting delivered. And then finally, don't send attachments. This might be a no-brainer, but uh, again, that could be suspicious by the, the ISP, and they may choose not to deliver the email. Okay? So some good tips. Make a note of these. Make sure that you're talking, you're having these conversations with your clients so that they're compliant that they're not going to get blacklisted and that they're protecting, which is, I imagine for them, a very important asset. Um, if you ask, if you're working with coaches, authors, speakers, people that sell information products online, and you say, how important is your email list to you? They might say it's uh, unbelievably, unbelievably important. Um, the last thing I'll show you here, and it's hard to see on this, uh, but this is from Entreport. They've actually got this email delivery troubleshooting guide. And I won't go through all of it. It's going to be available for you in the replay. If you're not a free member, let's say you've come through social media to this event today, make sure you go to vaclassroom.com, subscribe to our right on our homepage, and you'll get access to the, all these replays, and you'll also get a free membership, which hooks you up with this, this download and, and other things. So make sure you go to vaclassroom, triple W, vaclassroom.com, opt in there, and uh, that will all these great resources will be available for you, including this this troubleshooting uh, little guide here. And I won't go through it all, but what it is, you know, with our support team, often we will get people saying, listen, I don't get any of your emails. That's a common one. I'm not receiving your emails. So this is a step-by-step -step process that someone in support can take someone through. You know, does this contact have a valued email address? Yes or no? Um, and then kind of, you know, is the email in question in the contact history? Um, you know, and in Entreport, which is one of the tools we use, we can actually track if someone says, hey, I'm not getting any emails from you. They're not being delivered. I've missed my offer. I've missed, it didn't come to me. We can go into Entreport and we can check whether A, they opened the email um, and, and um, whether they clicked on anything. So we can, we can see whether, sorry, the email was delivered and whether they actually opened it. There's a check mark beside it if they opened it. And so then we can go back and say, hey, listen, I'm not sure what happened, but it is showing that your email actually opened. And if they said, no, we didn't, then we connect with Entreport support and try to get uh, help and, and, you know, and some resolution here. Okay. So that's something, again, you can't really see it very well, but that's, uh, those are things to be aware of. It does say on the side here, content items to look for if emails aren't being delivered. Bolded hyperlinks is not something you should use a lot of bolding. Um, the phrase even click here can be somewhat of a spammy thing. Um, URL, URL shorteners, because they give kind of a weird code, you know, like bit.ly, um, that might be suspicious from the ISP standpoint, um, things like that. So, uh, so this is a good little resource uh, that will be available um, along with uh, the replay of this event. Okay. 
So good. So there's there's a quick rundown on uh, some of the things that you can do to protect yourself in the, what, what I would call the email marketing minefield. So uh, at this point, I want to take any of your questions. So this is your time, and I see some have come in already. Uh, but let, ooh, lots of questions here. But yeah, definitely post your questions and let's uh, let's talk about this. And I'm gonna, realizing I have this really big water bottle today. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Mm. Yeah, this was uh, some swag that I got from a from a university. Um, so I'm trying to be very diligent with my daily intake of water, and I'm clearly uh, being successful. Look at the size of that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Let me see what's coming up here. Uh, Fergie was asking, what do the other colors mean um, in terms of, um, you know what? I do not, I don't have a good answer for you. What, what, because brown was brown listed and yellow listed. I've got to actually look that up. I know what white listed means, means that you are wanting to receive email from somebody and you whitelist them so that the ISP says, this person's good to send to you. Blacklisted means that you know, you've shown up on a site where you could be hurting your deliverability. I don't know if yellow and brown is kind of in the warning area. I, I don't know, I've got to look that up. That's a, that's a terrific question that I should have the answer for. Um, yep, yeah, great, great question. Okay, so someone asked what is uh, neutralized? And maybe that came up on, uh, maybe let me know, where did that come up again, neutralized? Oh, neutralized here. Um, or sorry, it's not neutral, it's neutral listed. Uh, again, I have to look that up. I can't give you a good answer in that, which is really not good, because this is not a site that I've used a lot of. Um, typically, if we've looked before, we've gone to the major providers like Spamhaus and, and looked at those. But uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do a little fact finding. You could definitely check this site out yourself. And uh, this is the only one that I've seen that actually has it laid out that way. Typically, it's either black or white. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of interesting. All right. Uh, yeah, definitely good tip, Sabrina, is to use your name. And again, we, we have, you know, we're relational beings, right? You know, we should be, you know, if you want to get attention in somebody's inbox and build a relationship with them, then, you know, they come to know you by name. Um, we have gotten away using VA Classroom for years is because that's a brand that I'm very much connected to and that people know and hopefully trust. Um, yeah, Mary says an alternative to sending attachments, like you have a Word doc you want them to have. Just put it as a PDF or a Word, and just use a you know add it to your server or to an Amazon S3 account, and then uh, and I you know I'm I'm even guilty of this, and just going through this process, I'm learning this as well. Is just make sure you hyperlink it. So just say um, access your uh, your whatever your ten cake decorating tips doc here. Um, and then hyperlink to them for download. That's a way, that's a better way, a better practice than, than attaching it as well. Yeah, and include it, include it in the main body of the email. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yeah, lots of good comments coming in. Anything else coming up? Yeah, that, Mary, it is that multi-BL, RBL site. I'm gonna have to look at, um, what it means to be yellow listed and neutral listed. Neutral sounds very much like it's not good or not bad. Um, it, you know, the big thing again, the big factor is to make sure you're staying off of uh, staying off of blacklists as well. So tell me, was this helpful? Is this is this helpful information? I mean, again, we don't talk about it a lot at VA Classroom. We tend to talk about um, email marketing strategies, how to how to use different tools, things like that. Um, was this was this a useful uh, kind of a hopefully this was a, a useful for you um, to take to your clients because again I when we had our issue when we showed up on that blacklist you know in in business sometimes you take things and and in life sometimes you take things for granted so I, I had totally taken my my established email list for granted and now I'm not being able to deliver all to all all the people it's there's only there's a small percentage that I'm not able to deliver to. That's a huge, huge deal. And it's, um, it's a game changer. You know, your clients could have 
a million people on their list and they could say, you know, hey, I've got a million people on my list and I'm going to mail all these great offers and make all this money. But if they end up on spam hoss, let me tell you, they're not going to be a million people aren't going to be receiving those emails. And I can't tell you the percentage, but it's going to be substantially less as well. So again, good stuff to, you know, you may want to have a little strategy session with your clients and say, hey, I know that you do a lot of email marketing. I know that email is at the heart of your business, but are you, how are you protecting it? Do you clean the list very well? Are you, are you getting rid of those that are bounced, that bouncing, um, you know, that are undeliverables, um, people that haven't opened your emails in the last maybe 90 days? Um, you know, are we doing single opt-in versus double opt-in? You know, maybe double opt-in will give us more qualified. All of that is really good information to, to impart to your clients. And I'll tell you, we get, as entrepreneurs, we're so, you know, we're always moving around with our, with our, it's like our hair's on fire. You know, we're busy and we're, there's lots going on that we don't think about, oh, should I clean my list or purge my list? Or should I check spam host to make sure I'm not blacklisted um, as well? Uh, you know what? Even as you do your due diligence, if a new client comes to you and they're a coach and they do a lot of email marketing, you might want to see, is this client going to be a good person to work with or are they a big time, I was going to say a big fat spammer, <laughs> but they're a big time spammer um, where they, you know, they are showing up on spam host. So maybe you go to spam host and say, hmm, let me check the domain just to make sure they're not sketchy. And, and it doesn't mean that every person that shows up on spam house is bad news. There's a certain good percentage of them that are as well. Okay. So yeah, so lots of, uh, lots of good information to think about. Thanks everyone. Thanks again for, um, navigating through my tech issues. I like, I really like webinar jam. I, I, I've used go to webinar for so long, but I like the interaction that you all can have on the side. There's polls. I could bring videos in. So I am going to be more diligently using Webinar Jam. It's a great tool. Um, I did a, a session on Webinar Jam and Google Hangouts actually in summer camp. Some of you may have seen that one. But it's a really popular tool. And I know it's one of those tools, kind of like me. I bought it like a year ago. And then I sat on it. Or maybe I bought it like 18 months ago. And then I sat on it for a long time. But it is a really valuable tool that your clients can, can be using as well. Um, Denise says, from this session, I'm going to add, um, <laughs> actually, you can see it all now. It's not like a go-to webinar. Um, I'm going to add uh, checking domain reputations to my prospective client screening list. It's good. Um, it's not, you know, again, spammers, before, when you, if you were working in 2003 and you were getting clients as a VA, goodness, there could be eight of the 10 clients that contact you for your work could be spammers. Now it's less, but you still do your due diligence, making sure you're working with good people as well. Thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed this session. And uh, this is going to be uh, available as a replay. I'll have the, the slide deck available for you. For those that are our premium members, uh, we've got email is our theme for this month. And we're going to be having a session um, next week coming up on list building strategies and secrets. Um, there's one thing to protect your list, but another thing that your clients are challenged by is how do I grow my list? How do I grow it in a, in a targeted, healthy way? We're going to be doing that for our premium members. If you're interested in finding out more about our premium membership, you can um, connect with our support team. Go to VA Classroom and you can hit any of our support tabs and we'd be happy to tell you more about that as well. Um, if you're not on our email list, you've come by a, a friend or Facebook or somewhere there, uh, go to vaclassroom.com, subscribe, because you'll get access to uh, these free events and other good stuff as well. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and uh, I'll be in touch soon. Take care.